Good day, everyone. In this lecture, we'll consider the Tevni and not in a golden circuits. And then the application of the golden circuits in evaluating the maximum power transferred to a load in a circuit. And before we begin, let us have a quick recap of what we did last time. In our last lecture, we covered the superposition method and the source transformation method. And we observed, uh, well, will I say, a slight misrepresentation in the last lecture, though, though we corrected it while we saw some examples, but it would be good to look through the approach once again. Now, uh, the first step in the analysis was to apply one of the independent sources while setting the other independent sources to zero. And to achieve this, to set a voltage source to zero, then we must replace that voltage source by a short circuit such that the voltage value is equal to zero because in this case, it is expected that the resistance is zero. And then infinite current will flow such that, such that V is the same as I, R, which is I into bracket zero is equal to zero. And then to set the current source to zero, we replace by an open circuit because with the open circuit, no current will flow. And we also made mention of yanking off that particular element of the source from the circuit. And then it means that if I is the same as V over R, so it means that for us to have this as zero, no matter the value of V, should the resistance tend to infinity, this will tend to zero approximately. Because for an open circuit, the resistance tends to infinity. And we also established that dependent sources in the circuits are left alone. In other words, they are left unaltered. And afterwards, we relabel the voltages and currents using suitable notations. Then we go on to analyze the simplified circuit to estimate the required current or voltage. Then we repeat step one through three until the independent sources has been considered to act alone. Afterwards, we add the partial values of the current or the voltage, depending on the quantity we are meant to investigate in the circuit. And we also establish that power is a nonlinear quantity and a sort cannot be evaluated by adding partial values of currents or voltages. Hence, it is the resultant values that can be used to establish or resolve the power value. Now for the source transformation method, we actually established that it will be necessary to perform repeated conversions between the practical voltage source model and practical current source models using Ohm's law to relate the voltage and current. Now this repeated conversion is done until an equivalent circuit consisting of either a series connection between a single voltage source and a single resistor, that is what we have here, or a parallel connection between a single current source and a single resistor is achieved. Something we have here. 
and we also established that these two equivalent circuits uh, would, pro would produce the same response provided the voltage source and the current source values are related by ohm's law, so that v sub s is the same as i sub s times r sub s. And then using KVL, we could add all series voltage sources, and that's using KVL. And using KCL, we could add all parallel current sources. And so with this uh, fully and well established, some examples were solved in our previous lecture, which we don't want to go through right now. Uh, one could always revisit the previous lecture. But right now, we'll be going way and straight, straight into the Tevini and nothing equivalent circuits. Because soon it will be apparent that the nothing and Tevini's equivalent circuits follows directly from the source transformation method. Okay. Just like I said earlier, it will become very clear, shortly anyway, that the Tevini equivalent circuit and the Norton's equivalent circuit follows directly from our findings in the source transformation method, where the Norton's equivalent circuit corresponds to a practical voltage source model. Me, we have something like this. Except for the practical voltage source, we have the voltage source connected in series with the internal resistance. And here we want to establish that this is equivalent to a voltage source defined by the Tevini voltage connected in series with a resistor defined as the Tevini resistance. In this case, where Tevini voltage is the same as the source voltage and the Tevini resistance is the same as the source resistance. This is for the Tevini. Second, okay. And now for the nothing equivalent circuit, we also establish that given that the current source is connected in parallel with the internal resistance for the practical current source, say I sub S, R sub S, so this is equivalent to the current source connected in parallel to the equivalent resistance, where this point, it is the nothing current, and at this point, it is the nothing resistance, such that the northern current is the same as the source current, and the 
nothing resistance is the same as the source resistance. Then it will be sufficient to say that by source transformation, source transformation method that the Tevini and nothing equivalent circuits are related if Tevini voltage the same as say the same as the product of the nothing current and the Tevin resistance for values of the nothing resistance being the same as the Tevin resistance. Therefore can now establish, establish that the Tevini equivalent circuit produce the same response as the Norton equivalent circuit. Good. Here, for this, we have that V Tevini is the same as I nothing of Tevini, and Norton resistance is the same as the Tevini resistance. Cool. So, now that we've gone through this, An interesting question therefore arises, and which is how do we evaluate the Tevini or nothing? equivalent resistance. That is our Tevini and our nothing. How do we resolve? So we are going to be discussing or better still introducing three different methods. Now let us start with our first method. Method one. For the evaluation of our Tevin and our Nuts. So let us consider the Tevini equivalent circuit. So if we have a voltage source here, So we have our Tevini 
definitely here. So this is plus minus V. Now you observe that the voltage across these terminals is the same as the open circuit voltage. Because this is open. So once we are able to measure the voltage at this open circuit between these two terminals, then we are establishing the voltage across the terminals. And that would be the same as the terminal voltage. So I will say that you notice that the voltage across the terminals is the same as the open circuit voltage. So meaning meaning no current flows through a tiny resistor. Okay. So hence V Tevany is the same as the open circuit voltage. Okay, let us prove that. Let's assume we take this mesh current I such that KVL. Let's use another color. KVL around the mesh give us to the negative here, that's negative the Tevini. It's going to be plus minus. That will be plus I. R tiny plus VOC, right? Is equal to zero. But no current flows, so I is equal to zero. So negative V tiny plus I tiny in times zero plus VOC is equal to zero. So negative V tiny plus VOC is equal to zero. So technically, Negative V Tevini is equal to negative VOC. So this implies that V Tevini is equal to the open circuit voltage. Okay, so we've got enough justification for this. Okay, let's break this into two. Okay, now. <clears throat> what if we replace this open circuit with a short circuit or by short circuit? So it means we're going to have circuits looking something like this plus minus. This is a tiny resistance. This is the tiny. This is our Tevni. And then say, so yeah, I want to replace this by a short circuit. And then we know for a short circuit, the terminal voltage here is zero, right? Good. Well, no current flows through this. 
resist also meaning a short circuit current will flow. There's a short circuit current flow through this loop or mesh through the loop through this bar. So by Ohm's law, by Ohm's law. R Tevini will be the same as V Tevini divided by the short circuit current. And, we're, and we already established that the Tevini voltage is the same as the open circuit voltage. So the Tevini resistance will therefore be the same as the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. Okay, now, if you recall from the Tevini and nothing equivalent circuit model, Based on based on the transformation, based on the source transformation method. That's why this based based on the source transformation method. You will recall that the Tevini is the same as R Tevini 9 nothing. Okay? Such that, such that the R Tevini is the same as V Tevini divided by I nothing. So following our deduction here and deduction here, we can therefore establish that the R Tevini is the same as the V Tevini divided by I, nothing is the same as the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. Therefore, we can therefore conclude that the Tevini voltage is the same as the open circuit voltage and the nothing current is the same as the short circuit current. This is our first method, the first approach in terms of evaluating the nothing resistance. So in summary, to adopt this first approach or what we call method one, in this lecture, we therefore can summarize that this summarily in this first method to evaluate the equivalent nothing nothing and seven is equivalent Resistance that is our Tevini, let's place it as arranged that is our nothing and our Tevini. The following steps could be adopted. Okay, the following steps. 
could be adopted. Yeah. Evaluate the open circuit voltage. And don't forget that this is the same as the Tevini voltage, okay? And the second is to evaluate the short circuit current. And this is the same as the nothing current. And then using Ohm's law, we can therefore relate the open circuit voltage. This is VOC. Now uh, this is ISC. And this is VOC, open circuit voltage. You can relate the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. So using Ohm's law, relate open circuit voltage and the short circuit current to evaluate the Norton resistance or the Tevini resistance or the Norton resistance. Good. So let us consider one simple example. Let us assume we have a voltage source. And we have some resistors connected in this manner. So, so this is a two volts voltage source, a four ohm, we have five ohms here, we have two ohms here, and we have three ohms here. So what are we expected to evaluate? Evaluate our tevini. We already established that our tevini by our method one is the same as the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. So for us to evaluate the open circuit voltage, and it means we'll have to resolve the voltage across these terminals, okay? And for us to do that, just wipe this. So we understand that this is positive, negative, and the voltage here is VOC. That's what we want to resolve. And by inspection, you can see that we can actually apply nodal analysis, okay? Because here, we can establish this as our reference node. So if you ref, it's equal to zero volts, right? And then we understand that this voltage, VOC, applies at this point, so this is a node, okay? Because it's an open circuit, so this is VOC, okay? That connects all of this. So this is another node, okay? You can say this is V1. Then we know this is a node, but it is not, uh, well, we actually know the value called that. Need independent nodes, nodes with unknown voltage values, can be resolved. So we have to sense of equation here. So this node is negative with respect to this. So this is negative two volts here, okay? And then we can assign the current directions. So if this current moves this way and this this way and this this way, this this way. So we can say this is I1, I2, I3, and this is I4. So, 
if we write KCL at node one, that is at this node. So we have the sum of current into that node is the same as the sum of current out of the node. So we have I1 going into the node, is the same as I2, I3 are flowing out of the node, I2 plus I3. So by Ohm's law, we can now relate the voltage values with the value of the resistor. So for I1, it is minus two, minus two, minus V1, because this is positive. Yes. A sign convention, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, 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 negative, okay? So you can relate this. So this is negative V2 minus V1, minus V1 divided by four, which is the same as for I2, V1 minus Vref, V1 minus Vref, and we know Vref is zero, divided by two, plus V1 minus VOC, open circuit voltage, minus the open circuit voltage, divided by five, is the same as I3. Okay, so once we solve through this, and multiply through by four, we eliminate four, and this will be eliminated, multiply through by five, then we eliminate five, and then we'll have 19, V1 minus four, VOC is the same as minus 10. This is our first equation, okay? So now let us write KCL at node open circuit at this node. So we know sum of the currents into the node is the same as the current out of the node. So, and here, well, we know that this current actually flows out. Let's say it's I5, but it's zero, right? I5 is zero. So in other words, we have um, I3 flowing in is the same as I4 plus I5. So since I5 flows through the open circuit, we know I5 is equal to zero. So we have I3 is the same as I4, right? <clears throat> so by Ohm's law, we have I3 to be V1 minus VOC divided by five is the same as I4, which is VOC minus VREF. That is VOC minus VREF divided by three. So we know this is V1 minus VOC divided by five, the same as VOC, VREF is zero divided by three. So once we run through the simplification process here, we have three V1 minus eight VOC, the same as zero. It's our second equation. So now we can move on to resolve to solve for VOC. Okay. So in this case, we have. By elimination method, we could eliminate both. That is, uh, we have 19 V1 minus 4 VOC is the same as minus 10. Then 3 V1 
minus a VOC is the same as zero. So if we multiply through this, this equation one, this equation two, if we multiply equation one by three, multiply equation two by 19, then we'll be able to eliminate V1, then we'll be able to resolve that. So we have 57 V1 minus 12 VOC, 12 minus 30, then 57 V1 minus 152, VOC is equal to zero. So, so this minus minus this, that's this plus this, that will give us 140 VOC is the same as minus 30. So VOC is the same as minus 30, 140, that will give us minus 0 0.214. So VOC is the same as minus 0 0.214 volts. So recall, that R tabini is equal to the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. Then now we have been able to resolve our open circuit voltage to be minus 0 0.214 divided by whatsoever we'll be able to whatsoever we'll get for the short circuit current. Fine. Now, we'll have to redraw the circuit to solve for the short circuit current. So meaning this open terminals, we have to be replaced, or better said, this open circuit, we have to be replaced by a short circuit. So once we redraw this circuit, so we we'll get something like this. Second. So this is four ohms, five ohms, three ohms, two ohms, and two ohms. Okay. Now, by inspection, we can adopt mesh analysis here. This is I1, this is I2, and then this is the short circuit core. Okay. Recall that the standard elements are defined by the passive sign conversion. Good. So, if we apply KVL, okay, by the application of KVL, and mesh one, that is this mesh. We have positive two is it's positive two plus four I one plus two. So I one is flowing in this direction and I two is flowing in the opposite direction. So the I one minus I two is equal to zero. So by further simplification, we get six I one minus two I two is the same as minus two. So this gives us a first equation. So by KVL and mesh two, this mesh, so we have two I2 minus I1, because I1 is in the opposite direction, plus five I2, plus three, 
I2 minus the short circuit current is the same as zero. So by further simplification, so we have minus two I1 plus 10 I2 minus three I C is equal to zero. So this is our second. Then I came here at mesh SC, that is at the short circuit, the side of it. Then we have three ISC minus I2 is equal to zero. So this is going to give us minus 3i2 plus 3isc is equal to zero. So as I told you. Okay. Now, by resolving this three equation, so we could say from three, ISC is the same as be minus three divided by minus three, that would be I2. So if we say this is equation four, then if we should put four into two, let's put in, is four into two, then you'll see that minus two I one plus 10 ISC minus three ISC is equal to zero. So I one here will be the same as 3.5 ISC. So let's say this is five. So if we should put four and five, five into one, then we have six, 3.5 ISC minus two ISC is equal to minus two. So that will give us 21 ISC minus two ISC minus two. So is that ISC? To be minus, this will be 19 minus 2, so minus 2 divided by 19, which is minus 0 0.105. So the short circuit current is the same as minus 0 0.105. Okay. So once we substitute into this, we already resolve, we already solve for the short circuit voltage. So we can now plug in the value for. We already solved for the open circuit voltage, right? And the open circuit voltage. So we can now plug in the value for the short circuit current, which is minus 0 0.105. And that will give us 2.04 ohms. So meaning the Thevenin resistance is the same as 2.04 ohms. That's simple. So you can see, given any circuit, in order to solve for the Tevini equivalent resistance or the not an equivalent resistance, all we need to do is to solve for the open circuit voltage and then the short circuit current, relating them by Ohm's law, then we'll be able to solve for the not in resistance or the Tevini resistance. They are the same, which is the same as 2.04. And don't forget that this is the same as the Tevini voltage, and this is the same as the nothing current. So with these parameters, you can as well design the equivalent nothing and Tevini circuit. Okay, so let us look at the second method. Second method. Say. 
method two. Okay. This for the evaluation. not in the Tevinier resistance or the nothing resistance. So let's say for a circuit, use for circuits, having independent sources. Recall, I should we have dependent sources? We don't deactivate them. We we'll leave them unaltered in the circuit. But should we have independent sources? Then we can actually adopt the second method such that we deactivate the independent sources. Okay, that is voltage sources as always is replaced or replace them by short circuit that is this equal to zero okay and then current sources Replace by open circuit. Like this. I it's called a zero ampere, zero volts. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, we evaluate the equivalent. Resistance, these are equivalent of the circuit looking into the circuit through the terminal of interest. Terminal of interest such so that the equivalent resistance therefore becomes the same as the Tevini resistance and the Norton resistance. Okay, now let us look at one example. So let's consider the same example. Now, I'd like you to recall using the first method, uh, Norton Tevini resistance was the same as the Norton resistance, seemed to be 2.04 ohms. So let's see if we'll be able to derive the same solution. So we said we'll deactivate the independent sources. So here we have just one, which is voltage. Now the voltage source will be replaced by short circuit. Now, if we had a current source in the circuit, would have replaced by an open circuit. So we'll have to redraw the circuit. Perfect. Now we have replaced the voltage source by a short circuit. And then the second point there was that we resolve the equivalent resistance looking into the circuit through the terminal of, through the terminal of interest. There we're able to establish the fact that the equivalent resistance would be the same as the Norton resistance, would be the same as the Tevinier resistance. Okay. Now looking at the circuit, should we? View the circuit from this from this point, looking into it from this angle. So it means we have an eye on this circuit. So let's say we have an eye looking into the circuit this way. Okay. 
from this direction. You see that assuming an imaginary current flows from this point. You see, on getting to this point, you say we have a node. You see part of the current will flow this way and part of the current will flow this way. So meaning this branch is in parallel with this branch. Then you see that the entire current that flows through this terminal on getting to this point, again, part of it will flow this way, part of it will flow this way. So in other words, it means that this looking at the circuit from this direction, the three ohm resistor is in parallel with every other thing in this side of the circuit. So it means three is in parallel with the entire elements in the circuit. But interestingly, having established that three ohm resistor, because this is a node, is in parallel because this branch is in parallel with this branch. So we want to consider everything at this point as one element. So it means the three ohm is in parallel with the entire elements here. So it means I would have this three in parallel with everything here. Perfect. Okay, let's, let's change these colors. It's in parallel with everything here. That's this, it's in parallel with everything we have here. And now let's come inside, inside the circle. Now you see that the current that flows through this five ohm resistor, the entire current on getting to this node splits again. So it means this five ohm resistor is in series with everything we have here, while all of these are in parallel. So once again, we have another parallel connection. This is a parallel connection, but it's in series this time with this because the entire current that flows from here entire current that flows from here splits. So if we add these two current values, it's going to give us the entire current flowing through the five ohm resistor. So it means we have five plus, right? What we have going on here, okay? So it means this five ohm resistor here, the current flowing through this five ohm resistor is the same current that flows through these two elements. And now you'll agree with me that these two elements are in parallel because different current flows through them. Okay? So we can now say that the four ohm is in parallel with the two ohm resistor. Perfect. So that's what we have. Now we already know that. This is going to be equivalent to three in parallel with five plus four. Four and two are in parallel, so that'll be four times two divided by four plus two, right? So this is going to be equivalent to three in parallel with what we have here, which is five plus eight over six, right? So this is our equivalent, okay? Which is a quarter of three in parallel with five plus 1.33. So this again is a quarter of three in parallel with 6.33, right? Then this now is going to give us three times 6.33 divided by three plus 6.33, which is 18.99, divided by 9.33, which would give us 2.035. So our equivalent is approximately the same as 2.04 ohms. 
Okay, so hence, our equivalent is the same as the Thevenin resistance, it's the same as the Norton resistance, is the same as the 2.04 ohms. Recall, this is the same as we achieved earlier. Using our Thevenin, although the open circuit voltage, right by the short circuit current, we got 2.04. And using a second method where we have to, well, where we had to rather, where we had to deactivate the voltage source. And then looking into the circuit through the terminal of interest, then resolving for the equivalent resistance, we were able to achieve the same result. Good. Now, let us look at a different example by verifying these two methods before we go way into the third method. So if we want to adopt our method two in this case, so let us say based on method Two, all we need to do is to deactivate the two amp source, right? Okay. Now to do that, to do that, we replace by an open circuit. Okay. So we have something like this. Now, what we need to do is to resolve the equivalent resistance looking into the circuit from this direction. And just like we did before, should we assume an imaginary current flow, say current flow through the circuit in this manner and get into this node, Part of it will flow through this branch and another part will flow through this branch. So it means that eight is in parallel with whatsoever is happening around this axis, okay? So fine, so it means that based on what we have done so far, eight is in parallel what is happening here. So it means that Eighth is in parallel with this part of the circuit. Okay? And now, by further inspection, you see that the current that flows through this gets to this. This is an open circuit, so no current flows through the open circuit, so the entire current returns through this. So it means this is, these are all series connected elements. Okay? So it means that right in there, we have three plus five plus six, okay? So meaning all of these elements are connected in series while in parallel with this. So from this, we can establish that eight is in parallel with 14. And that is going to be equivalent to eight times 14 divided by eight plus 14. And then that would be one, one, two divided by 22. That'll give us five point zero nine ohms. So hence, our equivalent is the same as R nothing, is equal to R Tevini, is equal to 5.09 ohms. So here we say this is R Tevini, is the same as R nothing, is the same as 5.09 ohms. That's simple, right? So let us investigate using our method one, this is by method two. So by method one, we want to 
resolve R Tevini as R nothing as the same as the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. Okay. Now to do that, can resolve this from here plus minus. This is open circuit voltage. Okay. And now we can also tell that the open circuit voltage is the same as I8 times 8. So if we're able to tell the voltage across this element, because this forms a node, right? This forms a node. So if we're able to tell the voltage across these nodes, then can I well say we've been able to specify the open circuit voltage. So therefore, open circuit voltage is the same as I8 times 8 ohm resistor, okay? So what is I8? So looking at this, we have a current source here. So if we're able to tell the current flowing through this 8 ohm resistor, then we are good, very good. Now, let us again check the nature. Now, look at this. This 4 ohm, 4, 4 amp current flows from this direction. It gets to this node. So part of the current flows through this and another part flows through this. Now you observe that this current, let's say this is, now you realize that this current that flows through the 3 ohm resistor on getting to this node, this is an open circuit, so no current flows through the open circuit, so the entire current returns in this direction. Okay, so meaning the same current that flows through the 3 ohm resistor flows through the 8 ohm resistor flows through the 6 ohm resistor, so meaning they are in series. Hence, by inspection, you see that I3 is the same as I8 is the same as I6. Okay, so let's say this is I3, I8, I6 is the same current, okay? So this circuit can therefore be reduced to look something like this. This is four ampere. We have the five ohm resistor here. Let's see, let's swipe this. This is in parallel. With this, where this is three plus eight plus six, which is the same as 17 ohms. Okay, why this is five ohms. So, since the same current flows through them, so we can as well say that this same current now is the same as I17. So, we can peg this for I8 because it's the same. Okay the same current that's flowing through them. So by current divider rule, by the rule, then I8 will be the same as 1 over 17 divided by 1 over 5 plus 1 over 17 times 4. So, this will give us about 0 0.0588 divided by 0 0.2588 times 4. And that will give us 0 0.909. Okay. So, so at this point now, you see that. I8 is the same as 0 0.909. And the open circuit voltage is the same as I8 times 8, which is 0 0.909 times 8 ohms. So that will give us um, 7.27 volts VOC. Okay. Now, 
the core, what we are trying to achieve here is R Tevni, the same as VOC, by IC. Now we've been able to establish that the open circuit voltage is 7.27 7 volts, right? Okay. Now, by, by Ohm's law, by Ohm's law, we know that I nothing is the same as V Tevini divided by R Tevini, right? So we already know what R. R v Tevini divided by R Tevini, yeah. So we already know what this is. So we can actually spot it here, but let's not go that far because once we divide this by this, we know this is going to give us 1.43 ampere, okay? But let us solve for the short circuit current of the circuit, okay? Good. So, we can now replace the open circuit by short circuit, such that the short circuit current flows in this direction. So the current flows through the circuit in this direction. Now, for us to identify this current, the current flowing through this branch, through this short circuit, then we'll have to resolve or better still analyze the circuit, okay? And by way of inspection, you see that this current flows in this direction and get into this node. Part of the current flows through this direction and this, so meaning this is a node and these two branches are parallel. And the current that flows through the three ohm resistor is therefore in series with whatever is going on here. Now you see that at this node, current flows through the eight ohm resistor, it splits and part of it flows through the short circuit. So meaning the eight ohm resistor and the short circuit are in parallel. What is the implication of connecting an element in parallel with the short circuit? The bottom line is the entire current will flow through the short circuit. It will bypass the, the eight ohm resistor. Let us show proof that. So if, since eight ohm is in parallel with the short circuit, and we know for the short circuit R is equal to zero, so technically, this is going to give us eight times zero divided by eight plus zero, uh, zero divided by eight, which is equal to zero. So the equivalent resistance here is zero. So meaning this element is shut out by the short circuit. So this is the implication. Now, let us take note of this. It's very important, okay? Note. Since the eight ohm resistor is in parallel with the short circuit, that is, it is in parallel with zero. It's equivalent resistance will be zero ohms. So the implication here is that the implication is that the short circuit always 
bypasses. Any recessive element connected in power. So should we have any element connected in parallel with a short circuit in the future? Know that that element is bypassed. So in other words, we could yank it off the circuit because it has no effect. So technically, we can redraw this circuit to look something like this. Don't forget, this is the short circuit current. This is ohms. This is the three ohm resistor. This is five ohms. And we have the four. Good. So in this case, we can therefore tell that this current flows through, gets to this node. So, so in other words, the three and the six ohm resistor are in series while the short circuit current flows through them. So, so this is now equivalent. This is now equivalent. So this is four ampere. My equivalent is something like this. This is five ohms. This is three plus six, which is equal to nine ohms. Then the short circuit current flows through this. And by current divider rule, by current divider rule, the short circuit current be the same as one over nine divided by one over five plus one over nine times four. That will give us 1.43 ampere. Okay. So in other words, the short circuit current is 1.43. So let us validate this to see if it's the same as this. So Once we do this, what do we get? So 1.7.277 divided by 1.43 is going to give us 5.09 ohms. Okay. Meaning what we got Using method two, we also got using method one. Okay. We can therefore say that the equivalent circuits will look something like this. This is the R terminal, it's the same as 5.09 ohms. This is the quantum voltage, uh, the te uh, te terminal voltage, which is 7.27 volts. It's equivalent to the current source connected in parallel the resistance, where R nothing is the same as 5.09 ohms, and the nothing current is the same as 1.43 ampere. Perfect. 
So let us look at the third method, our final method for this. Method three. For the evaluation of our tevini or our nothing. So this has to do with the application of a test voltage, okay? It has to do with the application of a test voltage, which is V test, or a test current, which is I test, okay? So in this case, we assume that the V test is equal to one volt. And in a similar vein, the I test is the same as one ampere. Okay. So what are the steps? So the first thing to do here is to deactivate the independent sources, as always. Deactivate the independent sources. That is, the voltage source is replaced by the short circuit. And the current source is replaced by an open circuit. So the next point here is to apply the test voltage source, the test voltage source, or the test current source, are the terminals, the terminal of interest. Then, by Ohm's law, evaluate the equivalent resistance. by relating the test voltage and the test current. That is, our equivalent be the same as the Tavini resistance and the Norton resistance V test divided by I test. Okay. And so we'll look at one quick example. Now, if we consider the same circuit, we, we've been using for the method three, recall that we already established that the equivalent resistance is the same as um, 2.04 ohms by using the first two methods. So now, if we adopt this second method, recall that the first thing to do is to deactivate the independent sources. And once we do that, we apply a, a test voltage or current source. Well, now, once we yank off this voltage source, well, to energize the circuit, probably want to apply a test current source, okay? And then 
we can now relate the test voltage and the test current value to establish the equivalent resistance. So let us redraw the circuit. Okay, so to deactivate the voltage source, we replace with it, we replace by a short circuit. And then the next thing is to apply a test current source. Now, since the direction, the polarity, the, di the polarity sign here is in this direction, it means, means that the current flows in this direction. So for that to happen, then it means the current will have to flow down this direction. So I have our arrow sign here, this way, and this will be our test current. So usually we want to assign a value of one to it, one ampere, okay? So that is that. So the next thing is to solve the circuit. And looking at this circuit, we could apply nodal analysis, okay? And then we know this, we make our reference. So that's VRF, the same as zero volts. Now, if current flows through, flows through the circuit in this direction, then it means this current is flowing in this direction, then this flows out, this flows out, flows through this, and this flows this way. So it means we have I1, I2, say I3, this is I4. Now, we know that this is a node, okay? And that will be in relation to this terminal. So this would be our V test here. Because we have I test here, so it's V test, because the, the, the voltage applied across these terminals will be the test voltage in relation to the test current. And then this is another independent load voltage as V sub A, okay? Some unknown voltage value. So if we write KCL, at the test node, let's write KCL at the test node as a sum of current into the node will be the same as sum of current out of the node. So what do we get here? So it means one ampere flows into the node, I1 and I2 flows out of the node. So we have I tests into the node, and I1 plus I2 flows out of the node. So by Ohm's law, I said this is one, and this is V test. I1 would be V test minus VREF. And VREF is zero divided by three plus I2 would be V test minus VA. V test minus VA divided by five. Okay, and then for that simplification, this will give us 8V test minus 3VA is the same as 15. That is our first equation, our first system equation. Okay, so now let us write KCL at node A, that's at this node, okay? So I2, that sum of currents into the node will be the same as sum of currents out of the node. So I2 flows in, then I3 and I4 flows out, right? So by Ohm's law, I2 will be V test, because this is positive, negative, no, 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 no. Have to. Okay, we we'll have to place the signs appropriately. This current flows in from this direction is positive, negative, this is positive, negative. 
So it flows in from here, this positive negative, right? So, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. so because this is the same direction we are following. So, so in this case, so that's V test is positive with respect to VA, which is negative minus VA over five, then I three is VA minus zero, which is VA minus zero divided by two plus VA. Now the reference voltage here is zero volts because it's with respect to the voltage at the reference terminal. So so that will be four, that will be VA minus the reference voltage, which is zero, divided by four ohms. And by further simplification, we get V for V test minus 19 VA is equal to zero. That's our second equation, okay? So by solving for V test in these two equations, so we have V test to be the same as 2.04 volts. Now recall that the R equivalent, which is the R terminal, which is the R nothing, is the same as V test divided by I test. So which is the same as 2.04 volts divided by one ampere, which is our test current value, then one here. Yeah. So this will give us 2.04 ohms, which is the same as we have we derived using the previous, the, 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 uh, the other methods, method one, two, three. So by using these three methods, well, we've been able to arrive at the same answer. Good. So, Now, in summary, in summary, any linear complex circuit can be replaced, or better still, reduced, okay? Let's use that word, can be reduced, can be reduced to a single source and a single resistor using the Tevini and the Northern equivalent circuits using the Tevini and the Northern equivalent circuits. So the Tevini equivalent Secure reduces a linear complex circuit into a single voltage source. connected in series with a single resistor. So we have something like that. okay, and the nothing 
equivalent circuit reduces a linear complex circuit into a single current source connected in parallel with a single resistor. So we have R nothing, I nothing. So, so you should note an important application of these equivalent circuits is the evaluation of the maximum power, maximum power that can be delivered, that can be delivered, that can be, that can be delivered to a load source. So in other words, maximum power transfer is a very important metric in engineering applications. So let us quickly look at maximum power transfer. Maximum. Transfer. So to evaluate the maximum power transfer, power transfer to a load, say RL. Assume the load is connected between the terminals of the Tevini, Tevini is equivalent circuit. So it means we have Tevini equivalent circuit. Our Tevini, the Tevini, then we connect the load at the terminal. So we know that I by Ohm's law is the same as V Tevini, R Tevini and R Tevini in series, so that will be R Tevini plus R L. So this is our first equation. So the power supplied to the load R L can be estimated by P L is the same as I squared if I have flows in this loop, then the I L R L. Okay. So let's say this is our second equation. So if we put one into two, what do we get? 
PR to be the same as that is the square of this, Tevini squared RL divided by R Tevini plus RL squared. So I thought the equation. Okay. Now let us write this. Good. So to calculate the maximum power supplied to the load, that is to calculate the maximum power, the derivative of the power supplied to the load with respect to the resistance value, that is the load resistance value, must be the same as zero, okay? And we understand that this is a fraction and then we could apply the quotient rule. So by quotient rule, So if V in this case is the Tevini voltage squared times RL, that is the Tevini squared RL, and U is the denominator, which is R Tevini plus RL all squared. From this, then the U the UDL will be V Tevini squared. Why? That's the VDU rather. Why U, sorry, this is U and this is V. Okay, so this is the U. This is U, this is V, okay, this is U. Means we're taking this, taking the numerator as u, taking the denominator as v, okay? So the u, the u, the rl, that would be, this reduced to one, so we have vt squared, Why the v, with respect to rl will be two times, R Tevini times the power here, which is one plus R L, then two minus one, then the power become one, okay? So if we substitute this, so if we substitute this, into this quotient rule. So the PL, the RL, will give us V, which is V, that is R Tevini plus RL squared, R Tevini plus RL R squared, times the U, the U is VT squared, minus u, u is v, t squared rl as u, then dv is times two r tevini plus rl divided by v squared. So what's v? That's r tevini plus rl squared all squared okay so this this squared then by the quotient control is squared so this is going to give us v tevini squared r tevini 
plus R L squared minus two B Tevini squared R L R Tevini plus R L divided by R Tevini plus R L to the power of four, right? So this can truncate this one of these, so we have cube here and can truncate one of these, so we have that. So this now will reduce to V Tevini squared, R Tevini plus RL minus one of it goes by this, minus two V Tevini squared, RL divided by R Tevini, so RL cube, okay? And then, from this, we can expand this expression, okay? Such that we have V Tevini squared R Tevini plus V Tevini squared RL minus two V Tevini squared RL divided by R Tevini plus R L Q. Okay, so this minus this, so we have one of it left. So, so this will give us the Tevini squared R Tevini minus V Tevini squared R L divided by R Tevini plus R L Q. So, you know. Now see that the PL, the RL is the same as V Tevini squared R Tevini minus RL divided by R Tevini plus RL Q is equal to zero, right? Everything is equal to zero. We get the maximum value, okay? So for the zero to get the maximum value. Perfect. So the implication here is that you will observe for this expression to reduce to zero, then R Tevini must be the same as RL, so that the numerator reduces to zero, reduces to zero, at R Tevini equal to RL. So once we substitute that, so RL minus RL will give us zero. So this will reduce to zero. So in other words, D, the L, the L, the RL is equal to zero at R Tevini is equal to RL. Hence, the maximum value or better as a maximum power will be transferred to the load when the load resistance and the Tevini resistance are the same. Okay? Perfect. Now, if that is what it is, <laughs> means we have, it's our first equation here, it's our third equation here. Now, we can conclude that this is our fourth equation, and this is our fifth equation. Okay. So if that is true, then it means that this is an important parameter. So whenever the Tevini resistance and the load resistance are equivalent, the maximum power will be transferred from this, will be transferred to the load. Super. Now, what will happen if we then evaluate or better to substitute this parameter into equation three? Then we'll, add, then we'll derive the formula for maximum power transfer. Good. So, let me wipe the board.
So we have been able to establish so far that maximum power is transferred to the load when the Tegni resistance is the same as the load resistance based on our derivation here. And this is equal to zero. Good. Now, if we put five into three, then we'll derive the maximum power transfer to the load. That's V Tevini squared, where RL is the same as R Tevini. So we have R Tevini here, because R is the same as R Tevini, so we'll substitute that here. So we have R Tevini plus R Tevini squared. So this is going to be V Tevini squared, R Tevini divided by two R Tevini squared. This will give us V Tevini squared, R Tevini divided by four R Tevini squared. So this will truncate this. So maximum power transferred is therefore given as V Tevini squared divided by four R Tevini. So, in other words, you must note at this point that once the equivalent Tevini circuit is derived, from any given linear complex circuit, the maximum power transferred can be evaluated. Hence, the maximum power transfer to the load is related by the Tevini voltage and the Norton resistance. And this is established when the Tevini resistance is the same as the load resistance. Good. So, what are the what are some of the applications of maximum power transfer? So let's look at a few. Okay, so maximum power transfer is used in diverse engineering applications, okay? So we just mentioned a few, okay? First off, we're talking about green energy, okay? So in solar applications, to vary the electrical load on the cell, in order to achieve maximum power up, okay? So in solar applications, it is used to vary the electrical load on the cell in order to achieve the maximum power up there. Then also, when the effective resistance of the motor and the internal resistance of the battery, resistance of the 
battery are equal in a car engine maximum power is delivered to the motor to turn the engine, to turn the engine. So it is very important in the ignition of your car engine, the vehicle car engines, okay? And also, in transmission lines, Lines and antenna designs. Antenna design. When the source impedance, source. is matched to the load impedance, Maximum power can be delivered from the source to the load. We have many more, okay? So let us consider one simple example. So in this circuit, one will evaluate the maximum power transferred to the load RL, okay? So, um, in order to establish or better still derive the equivalent circuit here, the equivalent terminal circuit, we could evaluate the terminal equivalent resistance by using our method two, where we have to shut out all the independent sources, and then look into through the terminal here, where we have this load resistor, and then evaluate the equivalent terminal resistance. That'll be simple, pretty, pretty straightforward. Then afterwards, we could estimate the terminal voltage, and then solve for the maximum power transfer by relating the terminal voltage and the equivalent terminal resistance. So let us redraw the circuit. So this is what we get. And now, how do we resolve this now? The two volts voltage source has been replaced by a short circuit. The three volt voltage source by short circuit here, why the three amp current source by an open circuit. Now, by inspection, if we look through this circuit carefully, you see that if, for instance, an arbitrary current flows through this terminal, then say so this is positive, negative, and you see that current splits here, so meaning this is a node, and these two elements are in parallel. And the same current that flows through this flows all the way, all the way, all the way. Now, I'm getting to this point, this is an open circuit, so no current flows through the open circuit, so it returns through this part. So it means the two ohm and the six ohm resistors are in series while in parallel with this element. So it means that our, our terminal here, but I still are equivalent, let's put it that way which is the same, 
our equivalent resistance is the same as R Tevini, which is the same as, just like we already established, four is in parallel with the series combination of two and six ohms. So, so this is going to give us four in parallel with eight. That's four times eight divided by four plus eight. That will give us 32 over 12. That gives us 2.67. So our Tevini is the same as 2.67 ohms. That's simple. Okay. So in other words, maximum power will be transferred. Maximum power will be transferred when RL is the same as R Tevini is equal to 2.67 ohms. So technically, we have been able to resolve the value of RL for maximum power to be transferred. So the value of RL for maximum for, of RL for maximum power to be transferred is 2.67 ohms. Then now to solve for the Tevini voltage by inspection, you see that this current source is in parallel with this six ohm resistor. Then we have this voltage source in series with this, this voltage source in series with this. So by source transformation, we could transform this parallel combination here to a series combination of a voltage source and a current source. We already covered the um, source transformation method. And afterwards, we could use our mesh analysis. So let us redraw the circuit. Perfect. So our interest here is the Tevini voltage. This is positive and this is negative, right? Now, we know that this is six ohm resistor. Now this branch, this is by source transformation. We are able to arrive at this combination, right? source transformation. Hmm? Now, we we'll have to look at the direction of the current, the current direction. So it's moving from this point to this point, from negative to positive. So the arrow goes that way. So let's change the color. Negative, positive. OK? And we know that the value would be the same as 6 times 3. 6 ohm times 3 ampere, that will give us 18 volts. Okay, so now we can apply the mesh analysis here. Now, let's, let's consider the larger network, the larger, the external. So let's do the same. So we have the external and we have the internal. The internal relates with this voltage value, but yes, with the external, we could estimate or evaluate the value of I and then could solve for the Tevini voltage. So if we apply KVL around the larger mesh, what do we get? So that will be minus two. Minus two plus two i. Go all the external elements are related by the passive sign convention. Okay, I'll be two i minus three. Be, no, sorry, not got into that. I'll be plus four i. That's minus two plus two i plus four i minus. Three volts. 
plus 6i minus 18 is equal to 0. So this is going to give us minus 23 plus 12i equal to 0. So i will give us minus 23 divided by minus 12. That will be 1.917. Okay, so KVL around the smaller mesh will give us 4i, where this is i. The current flowing through it. 4i minus 3 minus v techni is equal to zero. Okay, so and I do we get so once we substitute for the value of i for into problem one seven Minus three minus the terminate for the zero, then the terminate here would be seven point six six eight minus three that will give us four point six six eight volts. So Therefore, maximum power transfer to the load is given by the Teveni squared times 4 R Teveni, which is the same as 4.668 squared, divided by 4 times equivalent resistance, which is 2.67 ohms. And that will give us 21.79 divided by 10.68. That's 2.04. So maximum power transfer to the load is the same as 2.04. Okay. So I think this is a good place to stop. And I hope to see you some other time. Bye.